Did you just hear me fart? That was really loud. Did you catch that? No, I did not. I wish I would have. I wish that would have happened. <laughs> that been so epic anyway. Okay, so well, that Well, hello everyone. What it do? Uh, it is Tuesday, which means it is uh, podcast recap day. This is true for our fantasy football league. Um, and before we even get started into this, uh, Kyle wanted me to do a joke with him. So go ahead, Kyle. Knock knock. Who's there? Foreign. Foreign who? Foreign oh ho. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Anyway, um, so yeah, week four uh, is in the books. Um, kind of a crazy week um, in, in the NFL. Uh, that kind of had everybody. <sighs> I it mean, was, it was insane. There's a lot of arguing going on, a lot of uh, crying and bitching, um, especially from you. Yours truly. <laughs> Hey, I, I was in my feelings for the first uh, half of yeah. Taylor's matchup, but I'm better That now. and also with the whole IR spot. But a lot of interesting, um, you know, conversations about what's going on in the league and NFL league and our fantasy league. So, um, anyway, um, so if we're going to go ahead and knock this out, Micah, he had the highest point total, correct? Yeah, so each week we've had a different uh, – Top score, Victor, high score. And this week it was Micah. So uh, let's hear from Micah. So I'd like to start this uh, shout-out off by, you know, congratulating my team over a great win. Um, you know, a few pointers. Dak's going to do what Dak does. Uh, Joe Mixon evidently started smoking weed again, which helped him out. Uh, Chubb, that's a big blow. That's going to hurt, but, you know, got to find a way to overcome it, whether waiver, trade, something. We'll be all right. We'll figure it out. Um, I think I'm going to start Shaquem Griffin at tight end next week after cutting off his other hand. I think I'll have a better chance of scoring more because tight end's been an absolute shit show. Um, you yeah, know, next, not, not too much else. Just want to give a little shout-out to my opponent, uh, ex-commissioner Kevin Roberts. Uh, Commissioner Roberts, I was with you during your, you know, your reign as commissioner. I was, had your back the whole time, even when Taylor and everybody else tried to overthrow you. So when I say this, I mean it in the utmost respect. I'm sorry for absolutely shoving your shit back in your ass in two fantasy leagues this week. Had to do it. It's got to be done. You know, you got to play who's on the schedule. So, you know, I hope we can look look past this and move on and just kind of get on with our lives. But, you know, other than that, that's about all I got. We'll see you boys next week. All righty. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. I think it's funny because we don't even know what he's going to say. We're just like, I know. I love it. <laughs> we're just like, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, whatever you say, we probably won't agree with. But And, and I don't even listen to him, dude. I just put him in there. <laughs> yeah, I don't even, I've never listened to one. Um, anyway. But, yeah, okay, cool, Micah. Well, uh, yeah, you had the highest point total at 157. Yeah, 157. So that's not bad. Yeah, it's not as good as Thomas's 180 or 90 last week, but it was pretty good. But who has the highest? Was, doesn't Don have like the highest so far? I mean, if he does, why would we admit that? Uh, that's a good point. Moving on. <laughs> um, okay. Anyway, <laughs> I can get Don a break, man. I mean, his, uh, you know, with the Chiefs and the Patriots and the, the Steelers and Titans. I mean, the Patriots no. were they're I you know they're hurt. No, no, no. Can't we're not out. we're not giving Don a break. We're not giving anybody else in this league a break. Since y'all want to be savages, we're gonna start treating hey, like savages. Hey, 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 man! I was nice last week. I'm gonna keep continuing to be nice so I can keep winning. Because hey, more important news. Woo, 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 woo! I gotta win. That is true. How does that feel? Is that if, like a the weight of the world is now lifted off your shoulders, right? Yeah, now Joey's the only D bag at 0 and 4. Um, and so, speaking I mean, of Joey, yeah. speaking of Joey, what? 
I have a confession to make later on in the podcast when we get to this game. So uh, let's just uh, say this may be another week of Joey Got Hoed. Okay, I can't wait to hear that. Uh, that'd be awesome. Anyway, so yeah, um, I got the W. Um, not very pretty, but I did. We'll get into that later. So the first game we have. Is there anything you want to say, Kyle, before we get into the, the breakdowns of each matchup? Um, if we want to go over some trades real quick that possibly could have happened. We can. We can do that right now. Let's go ahead and knock that out. All right. So as you've stated in the podcast before, and as everybody in the league probably thinks, I have a little bit of a bad trading stigma connected with me. I would say 100% so. Okay. So that's a fair point. So <laughs> what I'm... What I've been doing the past couple of days is I'm trying to shed myself of this bad stigma. So it's last take week, a yeah, yeah, but last week I made Charlie an offer, and if he would have accepted my offer, he would have won his matchup against Thomas. Like, what was it? Can we break it down? I mean, I don't, I don't want to go into specifics and details here, but he would have won his matchup against Thomas, and I don't want to go into the specifics. I don't want to. Why? You're not, are you some like politician who did some dirty corrupt thing? <laughs> no, it wasn't. Uh, obviously, uh, so I'll, I'll just break it down for y'all. I offered him Ronald Jones. I forget who I was going to receive. I would have to go back through his team and look. You tried to trade me, to, uh, Ronald Jones. Yeah, I, I tried to trade Ronald Jones last week. But I think I tried to get Matt Ryan. Fournette is the main guy, so who's going to take that trade? Uh, Fournette was hurt, and he's gonna. Yeah, but he's not gonna be hurt forever. Yeah, but it would have got Charlie the dub. He's gonna be hurt these two games, and plus he's he's down for ten to twelve points every game, even if Fournette's in there. I just feel like that this whole segment is just you trying to make yourself like a a legit trade person, and I don't think I don't think anyone's gonna buy it. No, I'm spitting facts here, so that's fact. Charlie would have won if he would have started. My guy, Rojo, and he would have made the trade, giving up his backup quarterback. He has Lamar Jackson. He's never <laughs> going to play Matt Ryan over Lamar Jackson unless Lamar so Jackson you, has so his you, bye you, week. Hang on. You offered him Ronald Jones and who else? It was Ronald Jones for Matt Ryan just straight up, I, I believe. Oh. There may have been like a little sweetener in there, but. I would have took the trade. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, who's his running backs? Well, his running backs are. They look a little better now, but Chris Carson, David Montgomery, Josh Kelly, who gave him three points, obviously with the Eckler news, he looks a little better, but we didn't know that at the time, and he has Carrion Johnson gave him one point. Did you just hear me fart? That was really loud. Did you catch that? No, I did not. I wish I would have. I wish that would have (laughs) happened. That would have been so epic anyway. Okay. So that that was the trade last week to Charlie. Yeah. And then today I contacted Biko. I was after his backup quarterback, and as we all know, I've mentioned it in the podcast. Biko's mentioned it in the league chat. He hasn't found a tight end yet, right? Who's his tight end? Well, his tight end currently is Jimmy Graham, but he's picked up like five tight ends so far off of the waiver wire. Yeah, he's like me with quarterbacks. He's on the carousel. He's hurting on tight ends. So I said, you know what, Biko? I'm going to do this trade. It's going to benefit Biko more than it's going to benefit me. But why do it, that? Because this – I'm I think that. I have I, – okay, okay, go ahead. So I have Tyler Higby, who is right now the number six tight end in fantasy football. I have Kelsey. Obviously, Higby's not going to play for me. Biko has Big Ben. Obviously, Big Ben's not going to play for him. Josh Allen's having an insane year. So I said Higby for uh, Josh Allen. I'm not Josh Allen for uh, his backup quarterback, Big Ben. No. I was in the trade analyzer. I was losing the trade. No, I disagreed with that trade. Okay. So then I offered Micah. Same trade. He's looking, he needs a tight end. His tight end's Chris Herndon, who's like 27th overall tight end rankings. I offered him Higby, the number six tight end for Tom Brady. That got rejected. He just threw five touchdowns. His starters, Dak Prescott. He will never start Tom Brady over Dak Prescott ever, ever, ever. Yeah, he. he well, in a bye week, listen, you can't get mad at people for wanting to, you know, hoard their 
they're upside guys. I mean, or not even upside, but the guys who are going to perform. And I don't blame them. I, w- I mean, the only trade I would have took so far you mentioned was uh, Matt Ryan, just because Charlie already has two quarterbacks. Yeah. So in each of these, each of these trades in the trade analyzer, I was the I don't, but of yeah, the trade. Got, I, I understand, but you have fucked yourself so many times. I don't know. You can talk to uh, to Biko. He can vouch for my trade offers that I've sent him so far. We already had one trade go through that benefited probably him more than me, so he can vouch for my trade offers at least this year. Okay. Well, you keep trying to work on that, but we all know you're still a collude motherfucker, so moving on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we had the first matchup at uh, Kyle. He is obviously from his little joke, 4-0. Uh, he's playing Taylor, um, who now is spelled – well, the score was 144 to 106, and um, Taylor's now 1-3. and Wow. Yeah, so this score, I don't know, it's not indicative of how the game actually went. This was a more stressful fantasy game than the score shows well, you right there. You lost a bitch and and moaned, and, and, you know, you can't, you can't do that if you're down, man. Well, well listen here, sometimes you got to do that to pump your team up. I mean, and I that's did what the same when I played you, and I still lost, so. Yeah, I know, but it worked for me. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. So, let's see, let's scroll down here. So thank thank uh, God for uh, garbage time touchdowns, by the way. Yeah, because I mean, you, you started your your RB two Daryl Henderson. You obviously, no matter I don't care what you say, you made a bad move there. No timeout, pause. <laughs> I did not make a bad move with Daryl Henderson. I know, I'm just joking. So it was a bad. Looking back on it now, it's bad. But yeah. coming into it. I mean, name an expert in fantasy football. You want to go Aaron Watkins. You want to go Matt Barry. You want to go Mike Taglier. Any expert had Daryl Henderson locked in top 12 running back. What's this cat do? He balls out. What Sean McVay do? Not put his ballers in the game. God, I need to cool down. I'm mad at Sean McVay right now. Yeah, you were, you were mad at him quite a bit, but, um, they barely beat the Giants. That's what I'm worried just from a football set, surprised about. Um, yeah, you know why they barely beat the Giants? Because they gave the ball to some guy named uh, Malcolm Trash Brown and not Daryl Henderson. Whoa, whoa, whoa. His name, first of all, Malcolm is a cool, cool name. Let's just say. Anyway. No, um, I will say this again. Uh, I'm on a hot streak, guys. Uh, you know, Kyle asked me about the Chiefs defense. I think even Thomas. Did Thomas text me about the Chiefs defense? Or no, Aaron did. And... Um, you know, I called it again. I didn't call three interceptions, but I definitely said, um, you got to play our defense because we're definitely going to get some turnovers. And they had 18. So, uh, this, this again, on fire. I'm, I'm, at some point, I'm just going to start gambling. I mean, I'm even looking into this, uh, where you make a lineup and you beat Jerome Bettis for like five grand. Yeah. That's Have you seen that? Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking about doing that. Like, let's just like load up on like a game with the Chiefs and just, I know. So anyway, um, so yeah, you had a good week. I mean, with your team, not surprising. Yeah. I mean, you, you put up points. Yeah. And um, I got to, I got to give you credit where it's due. I did text Malcolm Monday before the Chiefs game asking about the Chiefs defense. He gave me that little, uh, vote of confidence. So I spent $28 on him, but it, it worked. Yeah, and we got you to four zero. Um, yep. <clears throat> then, we, then we moved to Taylor's team, and good God, CD Lamb had twenty four points with yeah. Amari Cooper having thirty three. He did. Oh my! And how about the Browns beating the Cowboys? Can we get a round of applause? Gosh. Oh my gosh! Dude, I mean, honestly, you can't really say anything bad about Taylor here. He was put in a bad situation. Cam Newton got the Rona. He yeah, put in, he put sucks. in Baker. If you would have told Taylor the Browns are scoring forty nine points and Baker's only going to have fourteen fantasy points, that's just that's crazy. Yeah, I feel for Taylor. I mean, he played Mark Andrews. He had twenty. Crowder had seventeen. Terry McLaurin had twenty one. Todd Gurley had eighteen. Um, again, Josh Jacobs only nine points. I mean, I'm going to say this every week. He's just kind of not panning out. You know, Kenyon Drake. I'm, and we'll get to me. You know, on that pick too, but. Um, you know, Jacobs is killing Julio. I mean, if I'm Taylor, right, I'm looking at my team. I'm mad. I'm pissed off. I should not be one in three right now. No. And you should have lost last week, 100%. Yeah, 
I mean, looking at Taylor, he's definitely going to have to get better at picking defenses. Yeah, Cardinals D, um, I mean, I don't know, against Carolina. I, that's one of those, like, I just stay away from it because it's too, it's too gray, right? There's no, like, it's just one of those blah fantasy yeah. picks. So, anyway, um, so the negative two definitely hurt him, but, again, um, kind of a bummer for Taylor. So, moving on. So we got our next matchup here, Philip Rivers Abortion Clinic defeating Show Me Your TDs 105 to 80. And yeah, you- I don't I don't think this one was really ever close. Um besides Thursday. Yeah, I would say Thursday Melvin Gordon had 25 and I was like and again, I'm not going to lie, I was just in a negative mindset going, here we go again. I mean, Dude, yeah. when, when Melvin Gordon got that last touchdown run at the end of the game, I was oh, like, gosh. I literally didn't know who had Melvin Gordon, so I went to the matchups, and I saw that he was playing against Malcolm, and I was like, this is not your year. Yeah, I just don't understand. Um, but luckily, um, I made a really good move um, with Emmanuel Sanders. Um, I played him um, just because, you know, Thomas was out, Jared Cook is out, Um and I think that Drew Brees is starting to realize that he's got a weapon there. Um, and so, you know, Emmanuel had 15. Obviously, a big one. Amari Cooper had 33. And, man, I had a quarterback give me some freaking points. Yeah, finally you have a quarterback paying out for you. I picked Ryan, up Ryan Fitzpatrick. I like Ryan, man. I'm riding with him all year until he does something, you know, proves me wrong. Um but, I mean, I won 105 to 80, so this isn't, you know, you had two shitty teams playing each other, and it's a shitty score. So, I mean, nothing really to brag about, but I did get the W. Um, yes, and then, man. go ahead. Worley side, I mean, Patrick Mahomes, 19 points. For a regular quarterback, that's good. For Patrick Mahomes, where you drafted him, Kyle, that's terrible. That's terrible, yeah. Uh, Eckler, obviously he got hurt, so you can't really blame him there. Melvin Gordon did good, 25. A.J. Green. Uh, fantasy retirement right here, as they would say on the fantasy footballers. So one point there. What does that mean? Like, it's oh, time put to him re- on the bench. Re- some of these old guys, like it's time for them to retire yeah, them out of yeah. your fantasy life. I mean, AJ's been around for a while. Yeah, and the only good thing Kyle has for him right now is Robbie Anderson's panning out for him. Gave him seventeen. Yeah, he's panning out. Um, Golden Tate, you know. Kind of a bummer. Rob Gronkowski, I mean, he's non-existent. Um, let's go to his bench. Yeah, this is another one of these tight end needy teams. Logan Thomas's other tight end gave him one. Gronk gave him three. If you need Higby, holla at your boy. Yeah, moving on from this one, I got the W, kind of the highlight. Uh, I was happy that my quarterback gave me some points. Um, so now we're moving on to uh, Charlie versus Thomas. Um, Thomas got the win. Uh, it's a close one. Yeah, this was a close one. Um, and again, I don't understand how Charlie. Yeah, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Anyway, but uh, we start with his side. Of course, Lamar had twenty four bounce back game. Chris Carson, he's been pff, super consistent, twenty five points. Um, Dude, I feel like Chris Carson gets two touchdowns every game. Yeah, and it's just he's in that offense. I mean, he's when did when did Charlie draft Chris Carson? Wasn't it like fourth or fifth round? Dude, I would say Chris had to be Scroll third down. or fourth, right? He had to be third or fourth, right? Third round. Yeah, third round. Twenty. Okay, so I mean that's that's painting out really well, obviously. Um, Tyree Kill had sixteen. Um, Jarvis Landry had fourteen. That's kind of you know his people producing that produced. Um, and then on Thomas's side, uh, he had four players in the twenties. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, with McKinnon. With uh, Mostert being out, McKinnon's just eating, bro. Yeah, that's a good pickup there. I'm worried about him once Mostert comes back, but maybe yeah. they maybe they split the work there and Tevin Coleman's the odd man out. Could be, um, but again, you're not going. McKinnon's never going to have 22 points in a game while Mostert's around. Um, excuse me. Um, and then you got Tyler Boyd. He has 16. Devontae Parker, 21. Um, yeah. Yeah, I know Thomas again. Thomas's team, you know, it's looking pretty good. Scroll down. Yeah, and one twenty four for Thomas. Obviously, everybody knows what he did last week. I feel like this is a down week for Thomas, and he still scored one twenty. Yeah, I mean, but he did have four players in the twenties, though. I mean, that's not that's pretty good. Yeah, 
I mean, Devontae Parker, um, I don't know. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> look, Thomas is a solid team, too. Um, he's got a really solid team. He's kind of weak on tight end. Mike Jaseski. Uh Oh, okay. John, that's right. That's right. He had the Steelers by. Yeah, he did. He's looking pretty good. Gosh darn it. There isn't anyone on his team that sucks, really. Um, <laughs> so now we go into the other matchup. So this was two and one versus two and one. So the winner was going to three and one. Orangutan titties beat Law and Order trade rape unit pretty handily, one fifty seven to one seventeen. Yeah, I kind of feel like that Kevin's just kind of reaping what you sow type deal. Uh, after the Joey got hoed, I think that Kevin is just kind of trending down due to karma. Strictly yeah, due to was, karma. This is definitely a karma game for Kevin right here. Now, if we scroll over. To the Micah's team, he's got Dak Prescott, 37. 37 points, Dak Prescott, 500 yards passing. Uh, and then Nick Chubb gets hurt. But yeah, then Joe Mixon, for- Joe Mixon, 42 points, what in the actual book? Dude, do you know that wrestling thing, like where the Undertaker – Pops up out of the casket and it's like he's alive. That's what Joe Mixon did this week in fantasy football. Great analogy. Um, and shout out. I mean, I think our our uh, age group wrestling was huge. Oh, definitely. I had I had the N sixty four games. I had like my favorite wrestler was the Sting. I loved the Sting. Okay. Uh, yeah, he used to, he used to come down and build the ring with his like black bat and the white makeup. It was awesome, dude. Um. So, yes, Joe Mixon. Are we going to call Joe Mixon the Undertaker now for the rest of the year? Dude, Joe Mixon is the Undertaker. It is established. So he has resurrected call. his fantasy yes. life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, if I'm Mike, I'm, I'm giddy like a little schoolgirl that the Undertaker gave me 42. Dude, you're giddy. Like, if I'm Mike, I'm happy. Like, Joe Mixon's alive. He's not a bust. But then I'm looking at Nick Chubb, and I'm like, man. Man. Yeah. Um... Is it, how long is he out for? Dude, it's it's significant. He's out at least six weeks. Uh, right yeah, MCL sprain. Yeah, it's not good. I mean, yeah, that might be a that might be half a season guy right there. Um, well, he's got Leonard Fournette. Like, I don't think he's out. I don't think Chubb's going to be out for the season, but. If he's out four to six weeks and then he comes back and he has to get work back into shape, it's just yeah, not. Yeah, but be he's good. got four net on the bench, and so I mean, when he comes back, but for the next couple of weeks, I mean, he's going to have to, you know, he's going to have to figure out what to do with RB RB one. Um, then he had DJ Chark uh, give him twenty nine. Uh, Brandon Ayuk gave him twelve from San Francisco. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, you know, he had. He had uh, really some players really go off for him. It's always a recipe for winning. Um, and then he move over to Kevin's side. Um, yeah, Kevin's side, and it's probably due to injuries. But I just look at his team and just look, ugh. Yeah, how is he? He I don't know how he was. T- anyway, yeah. Uh, I mean, he, he's definitely suffering because of his injuries. Um, you know, did Chris Thompson get hurt? He had to have gotten hurt. I don't know if he got hurt or if he just didn't play. No points? Yeah, he, he's, he wasn't hurt. He just played, he played 16, only 16 snaps. snaps. Yeah. Wow. And then he's not – Swift had 15. Yeah, so I don't know where Kevin got his information about Chris Thomas popping off this week. But. Yeah, I mean, he's – uh, but George Kittle had 39. Man, George Kittle looked like a grown man out there. Well, I mean, hey, look, I mean, if I'm Kevin, I'm in his shoes, you know, I may be mismanaged, but, you know, a tight end gives me almost 40 points and I lose. Um, that's got to stink, and I would leave that to not play. I mean, if he plays DeAndre Swift, no, never mind, Micah just went off. There's no way he would have won. Yeah, nothing Kevin could have done would have won him this week. I think Kevin is just riding this little injury wave, trying to get through it. And Scroll down, who had 17 for him? The tight end, Dalton Schultz. Yeah, but he's obviously not going to play him over Kittle. I wouldn't either, but I know he had him. Um, anyway, he might be a good tight end to trade for the tight end needy teams. Um, so going into the next one, go ahead, Kyle. Yeah, so this was our game of the week, if you remember from last podcast. Yes, I remember. Suck my, suck my ficking dick, 
versus the St. No Dolphin Tail. Close game. Brandon wins 123 to 107. Yeah, it's kind of a bummer. Um, I mean, no offense to Brandon. It's just, you know, I thought Biko was going to have this one. Um, but if we start with Brandon's team, I mean, you start off 12 points, right, for Jared Goff against yeah. the Giants. You would think he was going to be, you know, eating all day. He really didn't. But then you had Dalvin, 28. Uh, Nick Chubb gets hurt. Kareem Hunt, 19. Adam Thielen, 25. Will Fuller, 22. And I, speaking of trades, I had <laughs> I've been trying to get Will Fuller from Brandon for two weeks now. Dude, um, and then he, he puts him in his lineup in 22. Yeah, that's why I wanted him. He, he would be such a great flex. I've been trying to trade him Michael Gallup. I was going to give him Emmanuel Sanders, Michael Gallup, and Nicole Hardman for Will Fuller. All three of those? All three of those, and he still denied it. Wow. I mean, I, I felt like that. I mean, I'm giving three. I, mean, I, I don't know. Would you take the trade? I mean, I don't know. Because it's like, do you take three C receivers, C minus receivers for a B minus receiver? You know, it's no. Like, Emmanuel Sanders is not C; he's a B, especially okay. with especially with Michael Thomas hurt. Now Michael yeah. Thomas comes back is different, but I'm just saying, you never know. But anyway, okay, moving on. Um, I feel so, like Will Fuller. One last thing on him: he's either a guy that when he's in the lineup and he's healthy, he's going to give you 20. When he's in the lineup and he gets hurt, you're going to have zero. Absolutely. So there's always a risk there with Fuller. Right, that's why he should have took the trade, because now with the manual, I'm not trading him. Anyway, um, and mind you, uh, scroll down a little bit. I mean, uh, Brandon didn't even have Devontae Adams playing. Yeah, and we'll get to this in the power rankings. Obviously, they haven't changed the top three because we all won. But, I mean, looking at Brandon's team after the Nick Chubb injury, it just keeps getting better. Yeah, it kind of sucks. Um, so moving to Biko's team, uh, he had Josh Challen. Shout out for drafting him, Biko. 25 points. The guy's on a roll. Um, Robinson had 14. Mike Davis, 21 points. Every, we all made fun of you, everyone. Yeah, everybody made fun of Biko for spending all that fab on Mike Davis, which he's been the, the little CMC, uh, not not the big CMC, but he's been the no, little CMC. No, that went – yeah, when CMC comes back, he can kiss Mike David goodbye. But um, 21 points for him. Lockett only gave him five. You know, that kind of sucked. Um, but that's bound sure. to happen with Seattle, you know. Yep. Um, Cooper Cup gave him 17. Jimmy Graham, I thought he wasn't even playing in the NFL anymore until yeah, I, I think, saw his bald head against the Falcons. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he had a good game against the Falcons. But let's be honest, that's the Falcons. Anybody can have a good game against them. Yeah, that's what we're going to go into after we go through the games. Um, so, yeah. the Darius Slayton had seven. Um, you know, Biko's team injured. Sonny Michelle hurt. Christian McCaffrey hurt. Ben Roethlisberger. Juju. I mean, Biko's. I mean, he's he's living and dying right now by really Tyler is. Lockett. But even if even if he's at two and two though the way he is, I mean I'm not I'm not upset with the kind of injuries and what he's dealing with with the Steelers and Titans. So um, good win, Brandon. You're three and one. You're first in your division. So you know yeah, that was a good win. Um, now, so the only zero and four team remaining now. It, uh, Joey. The only the only defeated team. Wow. So Joey party like a Gronk star one sixteen. To Don's 132, and I'm pretty sure everybody was rooting for Joey because everybody wants to see Joey get his first win and then yes. trash whoever he beats. Yeah, um, I mean, we had he had Odell give him 38, you know. Yeah, I mean, looking at this before the Sunday night game, Joey was like locked in for a win here, 100%. But then I mean, you know, but then he, you know, Ertz gives him 12, okay. I'm, I'm sorry, gives him, I was looking at the wrong thing. Yeah, he only had three players, and he had, his kicker gave him 17. Yeah, so Cincinnati's kicker, I guess, went off, gave him 17. Um, I, mean, I, I would take that every week for my kicker. Yeah, if I got my quarterback gave me 20, my RB2's gave me 18, I got Odell with 38, kicker 17. But, you know, and 116 would have beat me. Yeah. 116 so, would have beat Taylor. 116 would have beat um, Charlie. Well, Charlie, yeah. I mean, so if he has, you know, Marvin Jones Jr. at one point, Zach Ertz six points, Russell Gage four points. Um, then you go yeah. to uh, go ahead. One last thing on Joey's team. I mentioned it earlier. 
Joey got hoed. He texted me before the game. He was like, Marvin Jones, Justin Jefferson, who should I put in there? Oh, my gosh. And you didn't tell him to play Justin Jefferson. Dude, I said Marvin Jones. I said his floor is better. I mean, he was ranked higher in the rankings. Oh, my gosh. I don't know if it would have won him the game. I mean, if he put Murray in there, he would have won, but it would have been closer. Uh, Wow. No words. Let's just take a moment of silence for this. Okay. You you need to do – well, I mean, let's be real. Joey, you you shouldn't have texted Kyle for fantasy football advice. I don't trust you, Kyle, with what you have to say. Plus, Kyle's not Kyle's not a Detroit diehard fan or the Saint actually hates the Saints. So, but my reasoning you know, there was the Saints were missing their top two cornerbacks. So you would think Marvin Jones would have a decent game against. No, dude. So when it comes to a football standpoint, yeah, the secondary can be depleted, but these guys are in the NFL for a reason. The New Orleans defense, you have to remember too, it's like the coaching, right? Um, it, it's not, it's, look at Bill Belichick and the Chiefs, okay? The, 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 the Patriots defense stopped the Chiefs for three quarters. Actually, really the whole game, outside of a few big plays. That's just because they've been, Belichick's been doing it forever. Anytime, anytime you got a team like New Orleans who's been around with the same, you know, uh, personnel, I don't care how many people get hurt on their defense. I'm scared to play anyone against them. Their defense is not that bad. I know you hate the Saints. I'm just saying. Dude, yeah, I don't I don't know if I buy the whole it's the NFL, everybody's good. Marvin Jones is good. Marvin Jones should not get you one point. I get that, but yeah, you know, but it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, he listened to your dumbass and he lost for it. So um now we move to Don's team. Uh Don kind of Bounce back, right, from last week? I mean, bounce back, but I mean, he's playing Joey. <laughs> he's playing an auto-draft team, Don. God, you struggled against the auto-draft team, and I hope I don't lose to Joey and this comes back. Oh, but I, hope so. <laughs> I feel, oh, like, I feel awesome. like some bad juju's coming. Uh, and you I said, said that, it. You, but... can't, you, can't, you can't take it back either, and I know it's, all it's about that. The, it's in the universe. It's so. in the universe. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Don had... Russell gave him 20. All right, Don, uh, Steam, Russell Wilson, Aaron Jones, Jonathan Taylor, Mike Evans, Keenan Allen, Darren Waller, Jerry, Judy, Red, <laughs> Stevens, Justin Tucker, who cares? Let's move on. Nah, just kidding, Don. <laughs> Aaron Jones gave you 22. Jonathan Taylor, he sucked, gave you 8. Mike Evans, he did good, 25. He has the GOAT thrown to him. Tom Brady, Keenan Allen. He's not 14. the GOAT. He is not the GOAT. He is not the GOAT. <laughs> Darren that, Waller, that he bounced him, back, sort of, gave you 15. Good play on Jerry, Judy. He uh, exceeded expectations there, gave you 14. Yeah. yeah. Don Dece- right place. Decent week, yeah. Um, if, if you score 130, you feel decent about what you did. Yeah, and what's so funny, too, is um, I actually told Nikki, and I didn't tell anyone else this, because I, and I should have texted it, but I told Nikki, I said, I think the Chargers going to beat the – I said, my hot take for the week is Chargers win. And I didn't watch the game, but when I saw the highlights, Chargers were up big. Yeah. And then – Tom Brady came back in the fourth quarter, so I almost thought I had that prediction right. Um, yeah, and somebody at work when Tom Brady lost the who? first, who? the first, so Mama at work. Mama, okay, yeah. Okay, so if y'all don't know Mama, Mama is a Tampa Bay fan. Was is while he really? Ja- while Jameis was there, yes, that's so right. He did like Jameis. He loves Jameis Winston. He pulls for Tampa Bay, but now he hates Tom Brady, and Tom Brady went to Tampa Bay. So I think it was – didn't they lose to the Saints the first game? Yeah, yeah. So Mama Derek texted me and was, like, trashing on Tom Brady. And then this past weekend, Tom Brady, first possession, throws a pick six. So then he comes back and wins against the Chargers. So I text Mama, and I'm like, that's how you throw a pick six. You throw it at the beginning, but then you close it out with a win. Jameis didn't know how to do that. I mean, you can't deny, look, Tom Brady's been doing this forever, so he's not going to get worried about getting down in a game. Um, I'm not trying to bring up sort of memories. Um, but, yeah, you just can't you can't count him out with that kind of firepower. He's got Bruce Arian. So, um, anyway, so, yeah, I mean, all in all, not really a lot of high scores. Um, it's kind of the first week, like we did, we said this last week, remember? 
Yeah, we said that during the podcast. It was going to be kind of a lower scoring, you know, type of uh, week, and that's what happened. So, um, moving to the standings, um, yeah, we'll start yeah. The standings and go down. Go ahead, you, you start off. You do the north, and I'll do the south. All right. So in the north, we got myself at four and zero, oh, and then we got Thomas at three and one. So there's a little bit of a divide there between the top two teams in the okay, rest. Okay, we get it. Moving on. Well, I'm just saying, me and Thomas are. Ahead right now, which yes. there's a lot, there's a lot of season left. Then we got Charlie at two and two, and then Taylor, Malcolm, Kyle Worley, all one and three. Yeah, uh, I moved up. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm happy. Um, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, so in the South, uh, Brandon and, uh, Micah and now are tied at three and one. Um, then you got three teams at two and two, Don, Biko, Kevin, and then Joey. Yeah, moving on. <laughs> anyway, um, so the South Division, uh, is pretty, pretty tight there. Um, now, let me ask you this. Looking at these two standings, is it the play, is it th- the top three in each division goes to the playoffs? So, right now, the top two teams in each division are the top team in each division will get a bye. So right now that would be me and Brandon. Okay. And then after that, it's all wild card. Wait, so what, so hang on. So there's two, four, six. So if this is four teams from each division go to the playoffs. Wait, what? I'm looking at how many players listen. All right. So the top team in the division will go to the playoffs, right? I get that. So they'll get a bye. And then after those two, the seedings are all wild card between but the whole But how many league. seedings are there? So there's there's six playoff teams. That's what I'm saying. So it's three from each side. Well, I mean, not necessarily because see here in the projected thing, it says south, south, south. Oh, so you're competing against everybody. Okay. Yeah, if you don't win the top spot, then it's just you're competing against the I whole see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Okay. And then the loser... They play whoever loses in the loser's bracket, correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. I feel like we need to clear that up, so I'm glad that I cleared up. Okay, so now we're moving down to the stats. Um, so the points for um, Thomas is only has 578 for Kyle and Don are tied at 575. Yeah. How does that make you feel? That's solid. I mean, I can't complain. That Don has as many points for as you? Hey, I, I'm in good company here with uh, some previous champions up here. So, Okay, anyways. Um, so um, now we're going to go to points against. Uh, actually, real quick, there's only there's only five teams in our league that have over 500 points for, and Biko's one of them. Shout out. Wow. Well, we've been crapping on Biko for a long time, so anytime he does well, we got to give him some. Um, so points against. Wow, Don is number one now. Yeah, He's he at is. Five thirty nine. I'm at five thirty five. Not far against. And Taylor's at five thirty two. Yeah. So Don has one of the highest points for, and also one of the highest points against. So that's sort of. Yeah, but that's that's okay. I would take that over, you know, Aspen. What is she doing anyway? Sorry, blooper. Um, cool. Yeah, and I'm happy that I'm at the bottom of the points against list. Yeah, see, that's what I don't like is to see the points for really high and the points against really low. Um, I mean, if you look at Joey here, he's third in points against. If he wouldn't have auto-drafted, he probably could have been 2-2 two and two or whatever right now. He could be, yeah, but he's uh, he's 0-4. Um, which kind of brings me into this uh, the, the next little segment, <clears throat> and then we'll, we'll wrap this up. Um, the Falcons, man. I mean, Houston just fired, right? Mainly the people on this call are Falcons fans outside of me, Don, Biko, Taylor. Everyone else is pretty much a Falcons fan, correct? Yeah, as far as I know, yeah. I mean, pretty – I mean, you guys are, like, really Falcons fans. So, um, Houston got rid of their GM, their head coach. I mean, from a Falcons standpoint – um, when you, and when you guys listen to this too, do you, are you guys ready to pull the plug? Yeah, I can only speak for myself, but yeah, I'm asking you. They need they need to get rid of this whole organization. 
Okay, talking about, I'm being serious. They need to get rid of the GM, the assistant GM, the head coach, all position coaches. They need to build this up from the bottom. They need to start over. Well, why? I'm just really fascinated. I mean, I live in a city where my, my, you know you guys are all Falcons fans, and so I don't, never watch the Falcons really or pay attention. So, I mean, what's going on? Why has it been such, I mean, an abysmal year? I mean, Dan Quinn showed what he was last year, and he should have been fired last year. But out of the, what do you mean you guys finished the season like super strong? Yeah, but we had an easy schedule at the end of the year last year. That's what people don't understand. It's easy to beat Kyle Allen and the Carolina Panthers twice. <laughs> it's easy to beat pick six throwing Jameis twice or whatever. That's true. So, yeah, I mean, Arthur Blank should have done this last year. I believe he's going to do it this year. Hopefully the Falcons keep losing, so he does do it. And hopefully the GM, Thomas Dimitrov, he gets canned. I just feel like I didn't want to believe it at first, but I feel like there is – like a losing mentality in the organization, and you got to just clean it, get rid of it, scrub it, wipe it away, start over. Cut the cancer out. Yeah, and I'm not saying, like, trade Calvin Ridley and Grady Jarrett and Deion Jones. I'm not saying trade all those guys. You keep your core pieces, but I don't know, man. you got, you got to you got to make some changes from the top. Okay, fair enough. Um, all right, well. That's all I got for this week. Uh, let's go into let's let's wrap this up with next week, week five, what we're looking at here. Oh, yeah. sorry. Before we do that, let's uh, go over. Kyle, you take you take this segment. Yeah. So we're gonna get into our power rankings from week four here. So we got a little bit of a shakeup this week in our last three. Number nice. twelve. I'm not in there anymore. That's awesome. Yeah, you're not in the last <laughs> three anymore. <laughs> So we got Joey sitting at number 12, yeah. Kyle Worley at number hey, 11. Real quick, you should just, at that number 12 spot, you should just, like, like uh, ingrain his picture right next to 12 because it's not going to move the whole year. Yeah, like, I should just put a waffle there and you all know what it means. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so Taylor at number 10, he moved down into the last three. And then on the bubble, so these are our teams that are on the cusp of the playoff line. We got number nine, Phillip Rivers Abortion Clinic. Number eight, Trape Unit. And then we got number seven, the Losers, Charlie. And then moving on to the next three, we got Don Watson, number six, Biko, number five. And y'all might be saying, well, Don won and Biko lost last week, so why is Don not ahead of Biko? Well, Biko beat Don in a previous matchup, so I Speaks feel like that. Itself. Yeah, that sort of outweighs itself, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then you got Micah with his his team, number four. And then the top three really hasn't changed from last week. Still, like, number one and then number 2A and 2B. Yeah. Brand, Thomas Brand, and yeah. Thomas and Brandon, number two, I guess we can say now. And then... Number one hasn't changed since last October, like okay. I said last week. Well, anyway, um, so let's get into yes, yeah, so those are your power rankings uh, for week four. Um, let's move into week five matchups and what we're looking at here, r- real briefly. Yeah, let's just go over them, see what we're looking at. Okay, so we got Worley and Thomas. Then we got Taylor. I'm playing Taylor. Oh, two, one, and three teams. Okay. Yeah, so we got Kyle Worley, one and three, going up against Thomas, three and one. I feel like Thomas is going to win that one pretty good. Yeah, I mean, based off what we're seeing. Yeah, and then, I mean, we got a North Division matchup here. You and Taylor, both one and three. That's this a big a, game. This is, a, this is a crucial game right here. Yeah, I mean, uh, might be game of the week. I mean, it very well could have because there's a lot riding on this game here. There's a lot right on this game. I mean, so you got you got to keep the momentum coming from last week with your win, and Taylor's got to find some of that week one magic that he had. Yeah, and you and you got to play Charlie. Um, as much as I would hate for you to see you go five and zero, I need Charlie to, um, you know, I'm yeah. not gonna lie. Since, since Charlie beat me in the week one, I should have started off one and zero. Um, I'm kind of mad and, and bitter, so um, I yeah. need you, to, you know, I need you to whoop on him this week. Yeah, and I feel like you're probably the only one besides myself that's rooting for me. I feel like the rest of the league wants it's, me to go it's, down. It's, it's begrudgingly rooting yeah. for you. Yeah, I mean, 
I feel like I'm on the dark side now. That's okay, though. Yeah, you, you have been for a while, Kyle. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> Belichick's been on the dark side for a while, but what's he do consistently? Win. Cheat. <laughs> <laughs> um, then you got Kevin playing Biko, two and two teams. Two, two and two teams. Yeah, and that's a South Division matchup. That's gonna be. A Ooh, good that game. might be that might be that might be game of the week actually. Yeah, um, but I mean, even the loser of this game still has two wins, where the loser of your and Taylor's game will have four losses. Do you think you think there's more consequence in me and Taylor's game versus Biko? Yeah, I would say so. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then you got Don and uh, Micah. Inter- interesting. Um, uh, then you got Joey and, and Brandon. Like, what's what's the over or under for Brandon and Joey's game? Like, what's hot the, what, take? What's hot the, take. Joey gets his first W. Come on. No, what's the spread on hot this take. game between Joey gets Brandon his first and Joey? W. What, whatever the spread is, is it, is it twenty four points? I'm taking Brandon and the twenty four points. Like, no, no, Joey, Joey, if you're listening, I need you to I need you to feed into my my win. Okay. You're gonna you're gonna beat Brandon, and it's gonna be the shocker. Next Tuesday, we're gonna sit here and we're just gonna praise you because you have some karma coming your way, my friend. Now, do me a favor, please just pay attention this week and play the right players. Yeah, please. text me and, and I'll tell you the right players. No, don't text Kyle. Don't text. Kyle. <laughs> don't, text don't text anybody. Just just go to go to go to fantasypros.com, do a little research, and, and let's beat Brandon and shake some things up. Um. Which kind of leads me into the last thing I have to say, Kyle. Get it off your chest. You know, last week, I, I praised everybody. And I got a W. You did. And uh, I was on the dark side, and I moved to the, to the, to the right side. So uh, I'm going to, again, I really, really sincerely mean, I hope everyone's team does phenomenal. Um you know, I hope uh, everyone's team gives them a very satisfactory uh, fantasy football. Hell, um, it, you know, it, in my opinion, we should all just get a W this week. Everybody, no losses. So um, I just no. want, <laughs> I just, I just want to wish um, really well fortune. Um, you know, if I rubbed the lamp and Genie came out and granted me three wishes. I would just say, hey, look, let's just let's just take away the losses in fantasy football and let's just let everybody win. No, I'm gonna have to disagree. <laughs> I'm gonna have to disagree hard with this. I don't know what this this happy go lucky Malcolm is that we've seen the past two weeks. It's working for your team, though. I'll give you that. It is working. Hey, man, bunnies, spring, but, pa- pastel colors. I'm all happy. No, I'm bringing this league down. I hope all y'all tie, and I'm the only one that wins. That's what I hope. That's funny. Uh, um, okay, well, do you have anything else, Kyle? No, I don't have anything else. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> see you guys week five. See you.